This is Khaled Hosseini, author of The Kite Runner, and I am happy to take your questions. Hello guys and welcome to I Love Reading, a channel about interesting book-related subreddit topics. If you love our content, please press the like button, leave a comment and lastly, if you're new here, subscribe to our channel. Now let's get started. This is Khaled Hosseini. I think some of you may have read my books, The Kite Runner, A Thousand Splendid Sons, and In the Mountains Echoed. This is my first time on this panel, and I am excited to read your questions and comments. We can chat about my books, the writing process, books in general, Afghanistan, or anything else that might be of interest to you. Looking forward to it. Khaled, first I just want to say thanks. I am an infantry officer in the United States Army, and I very much enjoyed The Kite Runner. In fact, I got you to sign a copy of it when you spoke at UCF back around 0506. I recently returned from a deployment to coast Afghanistan where I was on the border working with the Afghan Border Patrol. You are very well known there, and I spent much time discussing your work with the many Afghan national interpreters I worked with. I enjoyed working with the people of coast and Teres A.E. district, and will always look back with found memories of my time in Afghanistan. Although I lost a real close friend, I feel like our time spent there was worth it and enjoyed getting into remote villages and spending time with the people. My question is this. How much time do you spend daydreaming about your stories before you put pen to paper? Do you have most plot ideas worked out in your head first, or do you start writing and let it take you where it may? I appreciate your sharing your experience with me. I am sorry for your loss, first and foremost. It is painful to lose a loved one. I am glad that your time there also had happy moments and that you were able to connect with some of the locals. I hear very often from servicemen and women who write me letters and send me pictures of themselves interacting with local Afghans. Often they tell me that despite the difficult things they saw, despite the loss of friends, they walked away with a sense of appreciation and empathy with the ordinary villagers and especially the children. It is very moving for me to hear these tales. As far as your question, I do very little in way of planning my books. I go in basically blind, armed with little more than an idea, or an image, or a line of dialogue. Then I wait and see where it goes. I rarely know where I am headed, let alone how I will end the book. So I am perpetually surprised by the course that my books take. I find the writing process full of surprises and twists, just as readers, hopefully, find the reading experience. I love the spontaneity of writing this way, the possibilities left open, the feeling that I am not constrained or committed to any given path. I like how, every day, I am surprised by something. I might be a more prolific writer if I planned it all out, but I am unable to, and this method has served me well thus far. Is there any thought to the countries you take the reader through in your latest novel? I mean, is there a reason you chose France or Greece for example? I chose France because I live there and know the country and speak the language, I chose Greece because in 2003 I met Greek NGO workers who were treating Afghan children. I wanted to pay tribute to the international spectrum of the aid community in Afghanistan. I guess the larger answer is that this is a less Afghan-centric book than the previous two. There was an attempt on my part in this book to expand the social, cultural, and geographic milieu of my characters and to add a more global flavor to the story. The book begins in Afghanistan and hops around the world, from Kabul to Paris to Greece to Northern California and elsewhere. Partly, having traveled extensively the last few years, I wanted to expand the landscape for my characters as well, and partly I wanted to surround myself with a few characters who are nothing like me or the people that I know. There are wonderful writers, Alice Munro comes to mind, who find an endless supply of deeply felt stories set more or less in the same settings. For me, I needed some fresh air, so to speak, I needed to at least now and then leave a story world that began with Kabul and ended with Kandahar. That said, the home base is still Afghanistan, and no matter their nationality, the characters in this book have varying degrees of intimacy with Afghanistan. Some are expats who have a tenuous bond with their birthplace, some are foreign aid workers who have adopted intense relationships with the country and its people. Others have deep ties that they are trying to either sever or keep alive, and yet others are more ambivalent about their Afghan roots. But though this is a more global story with an international cast of characters, much of what the characters experience is universal. Loss of family, fear of abandonment, finding the courage to be a good person, the pull of home, taking care of a dying loved one. These are human experiences that transcend international borders, language, or religion. 
How do you create an entire novel length story from just one small idea? Where do the rest of the bits come from? Thanks for your question. It's basically an act of faith, hoping that a small idea will unspool into a bigger whole. Sometimes, in fact often, it doesn't and it just runs out of steam. The hope for me is that it will snowball. The best way to put it is that I have no particular method or technique per se other than this. I plan nothing, I outline nothing, I start with an idea or an image or a line of dialogue and see where it leads me. Because I never know what the next page will contain, let alone the end of the book, I am perpetually surprised by the course that my characters take. The writing process is as full of surprises and twists for me as the reading experience is for my readers. I love the spontaneity of writing this way, the possibilities left open, the feeling that I am not constrained or committed to any given path. Every day, I am surprised by something. It may not be the most efficient way of writing, but it has served me well thus far. I'm a 19-year-old Danish girl, currently writing a project about women in Afghanistan during the Taliban and Sharia law. I would really like to hear your thoughts on women and the problems on that subject and maybe on the characters Lila and Mariam. By the way, I'm a huge fan of your work. Thanks for your question. This is a very good question. Certainly in urban pockets, the position of many Afghan women has improved. A number of Afghan women have gone back to work, in schools, hospitals, some work for the government, they sing on television. Some even lift weights at the Gold's Gym. But Afghanistan is a rural country, not a country of urbanized middle-class people, although slowly that picture is changing. In the countryside, the influence of the central government in Kabul is weak. Those areas are instead ruled by conservative tribal leaders who live by a traditional patriarchal system that has always opposed the liberation of women. In those areas, particularly in the South and the East, Taliban-style oppression of women predates the birth of the Taliban by centuries and is part of an old and well-established social, political, and economic structure. So in those areas, there is still rampant illiteracy among women. Women are still forced into marriage, often at a young age, they're denied education, the right to work, schools for girls are burned down, teachers are intimidated, murdered, even. So even though things have improved in some urban areas, without question, the outlook for a lot of Afghan women is still dismal. And that's a shame. It's a tragic waste of human potential, because it isn't just women who are hurt by these injustices, but Afghan society as a whole. The issues of social justice, poverty, medical care, education, economic growth cannot be addressed without the full participation of educated Afghan women. And so for Afghanistan to develop, women have to be afforded their basic human rights. Hello Mr. Hosseini. This is probably the best day of my entire life. I am still a student at school, and I've been reading your books the past three months. First I read A Thousand Splendid Sons, and then I was in love with Afghanistan, the magical story of Maryam and Lila. Then I read The Kite Runner, and finally this was my birthday gift, the mountains echoed, I found a sad little fairy beneath the shade of a paper tree. I know a sad little fairy who was blown away by the wind one night. And then after this book, I was completely fascinated by Afghanistan and their culture. If I may say, you are probably one of the best authors in the world because of the way your words sound when I read them, it is like magic on pages. I am working on a project, short documentary movie, and I had to choose my own theme. I choose Afghanistan. In my home country, we know about Afghanistan only from the past 30 years, the turbulent years and wars. And I wanted to know more about this culture, more about what people are going through. So now one of my biggest dreams is to go in Afghanistan as a volunteer, or I don't know what, but I know it with my whole being, your books, the stories you've told are life-changing. Thank you Mr. Hosseini for giving us this magic. And I hope that one day I will go to Afghanistan. Thank you for your time. One question I would ask. Which book is your favorite? Thank you for your very kind words. Much appreciated. I can't say which is my favorite book any more than I can choose between my kids. Each speaks to me in different ways, each has its own virtues and flaws. But thanks. What influence do you think your books have had on the situation in Afghanistan throughout the years? You address some very important issues and I wondered if you have gotten any feedback from the people there who might have read your books. It is difficult for me to gauge the measure of influence my books may or may not have had in Afghanistan. Most Afghans live in the rural countryside, though that is slowly changing, and I think there is little awareness in the countryside, where poverty and illiteracy are prohibitive obstacles. In the cities, I think there is more awareness. 
There, the reaction from my Afghan readers has been mostly positive, in my estimation, especially among the younger, urban, professional crowd. I get regular letters and emails from fellow Afghans who have enjoyed the book, seen their own lives, experiences, and memories played out on the pages. So I have been thrilled with the response from my own community. However, some within the community, both in exile and in Afghanistan, have called my books divisive and objected to some of the issues raised in the book, namely gender rights, discrimination, ethnic inequality etc. Much of this criticism revolves around The Kite Runner, which dealt with very sensitive and taboo subjects in an open, frank, and unabashed manner. That book caused quite a bit of dialogue among Afghans and was the subject of some controversy. That, I understood. My main issue with the criticism is that it called into question not the veracity of what I was saying, but the decision on my part to air out dirty laundry. These critics tend to be older, more conservative culturally and more religious. The way I saw it, those topics are sensitive issues in the Afghan world, but they are also important ones, and I certainly do not believe they should be taboo. The role of fiction is to talk about difficult subjects, about precisely those things that make us cringe or make us uncomfortable, about things that generate debate and perhaps some understanding. First, all three of your books are my favorite books of all time, and I am simply very honored to be on this post. Second, I have always wondered, how were you able to convey the female perspective in A Thousand Splendid Sons so well? Thank you. I think for me the key was not to enter the female character's mind. Not only because of the gender gap, I think it is difficult to enter anyone's mind, but to have them instead enter my mind. To give them access to me, allow them the space to grow, become real, develop a voice, a core, an essence, and then to let them show me. This was a tough lesson that I learned in writing, and a very valuable one. You cannot force your way into any character's life, you can only allow them the space to grow and then absorb them. That is what I tried to do with Mariam and Lila. A question that I'm sure you're frequently asked. But how was the process of writing The Kite Runner emotionally speaking? It's a fairly hard-hitting book, even after multiple reads. It is tough to write something that connects with readers if it does not first connect with you. A reader may spend a few days with my characters, but I spend one, two, three years or more with them, daily. I get to know them well and they become like real people to me. They occupy an actual space in my life. I hear them speaking to me all day. So I become very much emotionally vested in my books, and I am affected emotionally by the fate of my characters, just as my readers are. What was it like giving up your day job as a doctor after the success of The Kite Runner? Did you in any way anticipate the success of your books? Thank you so very much for your incredibly beautiful stories. I'm so grateful for your books. I love each one. Thank you. I never for a moment imagined that my books would turn out as successful as they have proved to be. I think part of the reason they have been so popular with book readers is that they are very much human stories. Because the themes of friendship, betrayal, guilt, redemption, the uneasy love between fathers and sons, husbands and wives, are universal themes and not specifically Afghan, the books have been able to reach across cultural, racial, religious, and gender gaps to resonate with readers of varying backgrounds. I think that, at the end of the day, people respond to the emotions in these books. The best part for me is that I get letters from India, South Africa, Tel Aviv, Sydney, London, Arkansas. People tell me they want to send money to Afghanistan. One reader told me he wanted to adopt an Afghan orphan. It's a great honor for me when readers write me that Afghanistan for them is no longer just the caves of Tora Bora and poppy fields and Bin Laden, but that think of my homeland as more than just another unhappy, chronically troubled, afflicted land. In these letters, I see the unique ability fiction has to connect people through universal human experiences. It's a very gratifying reward to see that my books have helped paint a more human, sympathetic picture of Afghanistan for readers, even if that may not have been my true intent. When I read A Thousand Splendid Sons and Kite Runner, they really humanized the Afghan war for me. I think I used to block out the mentions of war I heard on the news, but while reading the books, I couldn't help picturing the characters in the book living in the war-torn areas portrayed in the news. I was born in Saigon and immigrated to America when I was seven. I remember having a hard time living with my Asian parents and their philosophy of the collective good within the family and the independent ideas of American culture. It's not a problem now since I am in my late 30s and have created my own family and or community, but I wonder if you felt these same dilemmas growing up and how you dealt with them. Assimilation is difficult. 
It was tough on me, but I think it was very tough on my parents especially, because they were middle-aged when we came to the US, a stage of life when you expect to at last reap the fruits of all of your labor. You do not expect to restart with a clean slate and have all of your accomplishments be swept away overnight and have to rebuild a life and identity. Not easy. But my parents also had a healthy sense of perspective in that they knew we were probably among the luckiest Afghans alive, since most Afghan refugees lived in camps in Pakistan and Iran. Living in California, even on welfare, was a far more attractive option by comparison. There you have it, author of number one New York's Times bestseller books, The Kite Runner, A Thousand Splendid Sons and, and The Mountains Echoed, Khaled Hosseini answering interesting questions by his Redditor fans. Note. Books talked about in the video can be accessed through the link on the description below. Thank you for watching till the end. If you loved the video, don't forget to press the like button and also subscribe to I Love Reading. See you on the next video.